Hi, Julie Asher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. You know how they say trick or treat? Well, I'm a firm believer in trick and treat, as this cookie project will demonstrate. The trick is it looks like a cauldron, but it's actually 100% cookie and royal icing from bottom, the flames and logs, all the way to the top of the broomstick. The treat obviously is the cookie itself, but there's an additional surprise. If you take the lid off, it's actually filled with Halloween candy. So you've got double the treat in this particular project. It makes a great Halloween party favor, but it can also make a great Halloween crafting project at a party. You can make the pieces in advance, assemble an assortment of Halloween candy and have your kids put it all together. And that's just great fun. So let me show you how it's all put together. So what you'll need, this is a six cookie project for the cauldron itself, plus a number of accessory cookies and loads of royal icing transfers. For the cauldron itself, you'll need two hemisphere shaped cookies, three inch in diameter, one with a two and a half inch hole cut in the top, a three inch base and a one inch riser on which the cauldron will sit. As far as accessory cookies, I've got a few, a broomstick, which comes from a really cute cookie cutter set from Cookie Cutter Kingdom, which also consists of a black cat and a witch's head, which you don't see here. For the lid of the cauldron, I've got a three and an eighth inch ring, which you see in the upper left, and a false bottom for it, which is about two and a half inches in diameter. All the dimensions will be in the video description. And our last accessory cookies are these embossed logs, which I'll talk about how to texture in the next segment. As for the royal icing transfers, as I said, we've got loads of them. I've got snakes that are curved and contoured, flat snakes, cauldron goo, witches hats, which consist of two transfers done with two different icing consistencies and a fondant band. Of course, eyes for the witch. These are a basic two-dimensional transfer, which I talk about in another video, so I won't belabor them here in this video. I'll refer you off to that. The spider bodies are done the same way. And the last transfer is the fire. For the cauldron pieces, I'm starting by cutting out a large circle. Again, all the dimensions will be in the video description, and I'll be shaping this over silicone hemisphere molds that are about three inches in diameter. This is basically how I shape the bottom of the cauldron, and I have a whole other video on this subject as well. The key thing here is just to gently pat out any cracks that you see. Though they'll be covered with icing, it's nice to get them out now. And the top part of the cauldron will be done in exactly the same way, except that I will also be cutting about a two and a half inch circle out of the top to provide clearance for the lid. If the top does not come out in the cookie cutter itself, which I think it will do here, it seems to be coming, then you can take a trussing needle and remove that piece as well. These pieces then go on the silicone domes on the back of a cookie sheet off the cardboard though, and directly into the oven for about 10 minutes at 375. Now, for those embossed logs, I'm using a New York cakes mat here, which is a little discolored because I had it in the oven, so I no longer bake on it. Just roll the dough as flat as possible on top of it. This is about an eighth of an inch thick. Peel back the mat, no flour on the mat whatsoever. It comes out quite cleanly. And then you wanna cut it into rather regular pieces. The logs don't need to look perfect. So cut them directly on the silicone mat. You can separate them a little bit on the mat with your spatula so that they don't bake together or transfer them to another cookie sheet. For dipping, I use icing of dipping consistency naturally. For every cup of my icing glue, I add about two to three tablespoons of water to get it to flow rather continuously off the spoon. And then for the bottom of the cauldron, I'm just submerging it head first into the icing and then shaking it repeatedly to allow any excess to drain off. To complete the drainage, I'll set it on a silicone hemisphere mold back on the one that I actually baked it on and let it continue to drain. The key thing here is to clean up the bottom edge before the icing sets. That's to prevent it from pooling at the bottom and creating kind of a puddle that is then hard to get off. It creates a rough edge. Now for the top of the cauldron, I'm dipping as well, but I'm using a slightly diff different motion. I'm rotating the ring through the icing. This I think leads to a cleaner upper and bottom edge as you can see here. Again, shaking as I did with the bottom piece, allowing it to drain on the silicone mold on which it was baked. This is a good task in which to use gloves. My hands are getting pretty messy here. You also wanna hit any air bubbles, pop them with your trussing needle or toothpick while the icing is still wet. If you do it any later, you'll leave a dent in the icing. Now to sponge the bottom parts, I'm gonna use an airbrush coloring. You could also use liquid gel food coloring extended with water. This just saves a little bit on icing time. Again, gloves would be a wise idea. My hands are very food colored stained now or using a longer sponge brush. 
but food coloring eventually comes off, so no worries. I'm sponging the lip of the lid as well. So the two bases, the lip of the lid. Now for the logs, I don't want to sponge them completely, just a little bit of depth and texture by sponging partially. Okay, let's talk about all those cool royal icing transfers, starting first with the hats. I'm using a number 804 Atiko tip here to create the top of the hat and a relatively thick icing so that it holds its shape. The motion here is to press down, apply pressure to create a fat base and then gently release pressure as you pull up. If you want a little bit of a contour to the tip, then just knock it over with your finger while the icing is still wet. Now for the base, I've moved to a parchment cone and a looser icing for more control and so that it spreads very flat. These bases are about one and a half inches in diameter. For the snakes, I'm back to a thick icing of outlining consistency using a number five Atiko tip. And the motion here is to press, apply pressure to create the head, release pressure, and continuously apply pressure to create the rest of the body. So push, release, apply continuous pressure. You can also pipe snakes on the side of a hemisphere mold to give them contour. This is great if you want them crawling up the sides of the cauldron. Okay, onto the fire. For that, I'm gonna use two different star tips, a number 30 for orange fire, and then I'm gonna add smaller accents of fire for added dimension with a number 25 or number 27 star tip. My icing doesn't look thin enough here. I'm not getting really sharp peaks on it, so you could thin it out and you'll get more definition on the tips. Now, once those hat pieces are dry, you wanna lift the bases with the tip of a paring knife off the acetate. Then a thick royal icing glue is all you need to stick the two pieces together. And because God is in the details, I'm gonna add some to these hats. I'm using fondant ribbons to create a band between the brim and the top part of the hat. And I'm just applying it with a little bit of corn syrup. You wanna make sure not to get any corn syrup on the transfer, cause it'll leave a shiny spot. I have a whole nother video on how to make royal, uh, ribbons rather. So please check that on out for more details. Both fondant and modeling chocolate ribbons are covered in that video. And then just simply snip it off, the excess off at the back with scissors or a paring knife. And I'm gonna add one more detail, which is an orange dot of royal icing consistency to cover that seam. As for the snakes, you're gonna to wanna to add all the detail while they're still stuck on the acetate. Here I'm just drawing a thin line, a little squiggle using a rainbow dust fine red edible marker. And I'm gonna add two small royal icing eyes, again of beadwork consistency. Same thing, if you're working on snakes on silicone domes, you want to draw and do all the detailing while they're still attached, otherwise they'll move and you'll have a hard time getting the details on. But once everything's on, just simply press on the silicone mold and the snake will pop right off or use your paring knife to lift them off the acetate. As for the flames and logs, I want them to look like they are truly on fire. And so I'm adding a little spritz of PME bronze luster spray. Just adds a finishing touch. As for the eyes, we're back to the rainbow dust pen to give them a bloodshot look, and you can also gloss them with corn syrup if you'd like. The first step is to make sure you've got a really tight fit, and I do that by filing down the top and bottom of the two cauldron pieces using my microplaner. If you don't have a microplaner, you can use sanding paper if you're not intending to eat the project, but sanding paper is not food grade, so avoid it if you are planning to eat the project. The next thing you wanna do is choose the front of your project. That is generally the best facing side and the one with the tightest fit. So that's what I'm trying to do here is to figure out what portion I want facing forward. I'm just gonna mark off the front with my edible marker on both pieces so I remember that when I put it together in the end. Now let's add some details. Here I'm etching and scratching a crack in the side of the cauldron with my trussing needle. You can use a metal skewer as well. And I think I want another one coming down from the top. So let's just add that here. Again, they don't need to be particularly neat. Now we're ready to glue together and I'm back to my thick royal icing glue. Again, the thicker the better because the faster it'll set and the less it'll move around on you as you try to assemble. Now that seam is a little wide open, so what I'm gonna do is cover it with a fondant band to conceal it, but first I wanna fill it with more royal icing because that'll allow the fondant band to sit more flat against the seam once we attach it. So I'm gonna go all the way around with my thick icing glue, just working it into that crack. As far as putting on the fondant band, I find it's easiest to do with the cauldron on its side because the band is less likely to distort in the shape. And I'm just attaching it with a little bit of corn syrup, taking care not to get the corn syrup on the cauldron because otherwise it'll leave a shiny spot. You can apply the corn syrup directly to the cauldron or to the ribbon either way. Just be careful, as I said, and gently work it all the way around. And when you're done, just trim off the excess at the seam. 
and now I'm ready to put it on the base. These are the sprayed parts we did earlier. And for extra stability, let's, let me just first put the riser down on the base. That's again with thick royal icing glue. But for extra stability in mounting the cauldron, I like to nest the cauldron in a little bit of black fondant. That just allows it to sit more straight more quickly. And I'd let that dry five to 10 minutes, support it if you need to with dredge containers or something else. And then you're ready to apply the fire and the logs underneath. This is the point of having the riser to allow enough room for those pieces. Again, just a pasting technique with my thick royal icing glue. Okay, onto the lid. I've since iced the top part and added some beadwork, but that's completely optional. Before we put it together, the, the key thing to do is to make sure that that false bottom actually clears the top of the cauldron, and mine does with quite a lot of room to spare, but if it doesn't, you can always file it down because you want your lid to fit in your cauldron, of course. Now I'm sticking it down, the false bottom, to the lip so that I can decorate the top of the lid. And because these two pieces are pretty tight fitting, there's very close clearance, I wanna make sure that I get a lot of glue both in the top, smearing it into the seam with my fingers, which are clean, though they are stained with food coloring, and also get some on the bottom. This just adds double the reinforcement, again, because there's not a lot of overlap between those two cookies. And now for the rest of the decorations, I'm gonna elevate it for this part of the process because some decorations are gonna hang over the edge as you'll see. The first thing to go in is the broom. I like to start with the biggest objects and then generally work smaller. It's just easier for me to see how the design evolves. I'm sticking that in again with a little bit of fondant to give it added stability, as well as thick royal icing glue. And you'll see it stands pretty well on its own pretty quickly with the fondant. Now we're adding cauldron goo. This is icing of outlining consistency. I don't want it so thin that all the texture disappears. It needs to hold its shape. So I'm just pushing it around here rather randomly to look like there's some spirals and swirls in the cauldron broth. In goes that hat we put together earlier. And these are candies I got in Argentina that I think look like bubbles in the cauldron. They're pretty cool, but you can make royal icing transfers to the same effect. And this cauldron is certainly not messy enough, so we, I wanna add some glue coming over the edge here. And not glue, but cauldron goo, rather. And insert my snakes as if they're escaping the heat of the cauldron broth. And as a final touch, in go those royal icing eyes. What's left of the witch are just her eyes and her hat. I let this dry at least a half an hour before assembling the rest of the cauldron, if not longer. But we're ready to do that, and I like to do that by setting the cauldron in a base of cookie crumbs, which look a lot like dirt. They also provide a nice little nesting spot for the cauldron and added stability. You can add more flames and other things around the base. I certainly wouldn't load it up with Halloween candy unless it had dried at least an hour, however. You don't want it falling apart on you. And then a final finishing touch of a snake, and voila! Okay, so it's all put together, and how cute is it? From the snake on up to the top, it really just screams Halloween. Now, if you're not into making this cookie project from top to bottom, because it is relatively involved, there's one way that I would suggest you can step it down. You can make any number of the royal icing elements. Remember those transfers we made, the hat, the snakes, the eyes, and just simply place them on top of a dark chocolate cupcake, and it'll be super Halloween-y. So, have fun with this project. If you are up for the challenge, on the other hand, I encourage you to step off to another video that I'll be presenting this fall season, and that is my Harvest Cookie Box, which makes use of embossed cookies to create this really lavish effect. It's also part of a special collaboration video with several of my YouTube friends. Till next video, live sweetly.